Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to analyze higher order models in SIM, Structural Equation Modeling. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of briefly kind of go over what do I mean by higher order models and then we'll kind of jump into the AMOS aspects. So when you say uh, something is a second order uh, model or it's a higher order model, it usually means that there are uh, constructs that make up uh, an overarching concept, you know. So, for example, here, so if I wanted to try to capture the um, the construct, let's say it's unique experience, but I think uh, a unique experience, and this was from a retail context. So, from a well, how do I capture a unique experience? Well, I think it's made up of multiple concepts, really, that really kind of captures unique experience. And so, let's say I think. Uh, like if I surprise a customer, like I'm really like, wow, that was really great. So if there was some surprise there, and let's say if it was even empathy, like I was empathetic to the customer's needs. Those two things, if you kind of uh, have its collective effect, would kind of make unique experience. So what happens is, is the surprise and empathy are what we call kind of first order constructs. They're the, the constructs that kind of make up the overarching construct or the higher order construct. So the, the ones that are on the first level, if you will, those are called first order constructs. The overarching concept uh, itself that's made up of the multiple concepts uh, or multiple constructs is called the second order or the higher order construct. And you'll notice that I have the paths going uh, from the first order to the second order. That is always the most appropriate way to handle higher order constructs. I've got a completely separate video on what's called formative and reflective indicators if you want to know why that is always the case uh, but it is you're always going to use formative indicators from the first order to the second order when you're making a higher order model so um, some of the unique aspects that you've got to deal with with a higher order model is really identification uh, because it's really kind of problematic and specifically it's really under identification so those first order um, paths to the higher order construct, uh, what it wants to do is it wants to have a kind of an under-identified aspect in regards to degrees of freedom. It's really sometimes kind of problematic. Um, and there's really kind of two ways to fix this. It's kind of a workaround, if you will. The first one is what we call kind of the mimic model. And what that does is it takes um, the uh, higher order construct and it says, all right, to address this identification issue, we're going to try to capture that higher order construct with a couple items. Uh, you'll need at least two. Uh, and what it does is it creates um, these two kind of identification items. Uh, and what happens is like, for instance, with unique experience, our example here, what I would have to do is I was in my survey design, I would have to ask two questions. Can you have more than two? Yes, but you gotta have at least a minimum of two. Um, that specifically ask kind of unique experience and overall perspective. So it's not asking about surprise and it's not asking about empathy. The questions themselves are trying to capture all of kind of this idea of unique experience. So it's the overall kind of concept it tries to measure. Um, and so you'd have to ask two of those questions in kind of the survey design and this mimic model uh, takes place where you actually include those two uh, items that you ask about the higher order and it's actually reflective off of the higher order construct and that's the reason why they call it a mimic model because you have first order constructs that are formative to the higher order construct and then you have two identification items that are reflective uh, off of the higher order construct. And so um, what I like to do sometimes is, is you know, because I, I am trying to capture the overall concept, is I'll ask actually three items. And then usually I'm hopeful that like two of the three will be really good. You know, they'll, they'll load strongly on the concept. But it gives me kind of a, a safety net too, because if I only ask two and one of them falls out and it's not very good and it won't load on the higher order construct, then you're really in trouble then. 
Uh, so usually I'll, I'll ask three, but then I'll use kind of the best two. The other option that you can do too, to address this identification is through, um, is getting identification through structural paths. So in this instance with option two, I, I still need to have kind of uh, at least two paths uh, off of the higher order construct. And what you can do is if you have two reflective constructs that are uh, in your uh, conceptual model, you can put paths directly to them and it will address your identification issues. Now I'll warn you, every time that I have used this, um, this option instead of the mimic model, it completely blows up my model. Model fit goes bad, my structural paths are really kind of wonky when I do this. And again, that's because it's trying to assess kind of uh, identification of that higher order construct through actual structural paths to other constructs. And it usually is just problematic. So I don't encourage you to use option two. Uh, option one is by far a much better option, uh, uh, which is using kind of the mimic model approach. Again, you do have to kind of a plan ahead uh, to use that. So let's give an actual example here so we can see how it's kind of laid out in the Amos and then I'll run through a, a quick one for you here and we can address some other issues. So let's say I've got a higher order construct which is unique experience and now I've got two first order constructs. So the first one is surprise and there was two items uh, that's my, uh, measuring surprise and then I've got an empathy construct and I've got five items that are actually measuring empathy. Uh, so what uh, Amos does is it's going to treat these first order constructs as your independence. Now, technically, from a conceptual standpoint, your entire higher order construct is the IV. But in Amos, um, the independent variables are treated as the first order constructs. Uh, so you can see empathy and surprise. Uh, it's got a correlation between those two because, again, it's treating them as, a, as the independence. So with the two first-order constructs, uh, we're, we have the formative relationship to unique experience. Unique experience has an uh, error term because, again, those are formative. Um, so it's going to treat it kind of quasi like a dependent variable. And then also I've done the mimic model up here where I've got... Um, two items that are capturing unique experience kind of overall. Those have error terms. And notice right here too that one of these paths is constrained to one. It's called setting the metric. Now normally in any kind of reflective construct you'll see to your your items or your indicators that one of the paths are constrained to one. It's called setting the metric. Uh, kind of lets Amos know like what is the range that I need to uh, to assess to and you can see that you know we have those on surprise and also on empathy that one of the paths is constrained to one um, so just know uh, that on this reflective uh, items up here off of your mimic uh, at the top you have to probably constrain that to one if you don't uh, it'll show that it's under identified too and so now we've got a unique experience uh, our higher order construct and let's say we wanted to see, well, how does it relate to positive word of mouth? Do I have a, a really unique experience in a retail atmosphere? Does it relate to a positive word of mouth? And I've measured that reflectively with three items uh, right here too. So let's jump into uh, Amos and we'll show exactly the kind of nuts and bolts of what it kind of looks like. All right here, so I've kind of set up my model um, just like I outlined. So let's just kind of run that analysis right here. And we'll go into the results. And so initially what we've got is it's going to give us our, our first, uh, first order to our second order. You can see in here that both of those were significant. The T values were well over two. And then you can see um, the unique experience, the higher order construct, the structural path to positive word of mouth was also significant. And you can see at the very bottom too that our two mimic items down here, uh, one of them was significant uh, with T value of 13 and the other one was constrained to one. Um, and if you wanted to see like, well, which path, which first order construct was stronger to the higher order 
concept, then we can go into the standardized regression weights and we can see that, well, surprise actually had a stronger influence on unique experience than empathy did, 0.48 to 0.29. And we're concerned with model fit, even with uh, higher order constructs. And you can see our chi-square divided by degrees of freedom is acceptable, CFI, uh, TLI, uh, are all kind of acceptable, and root mean square, a root mean square area of approximation is 0.06, uh, which is, uh, is acceptable as well. So notice again, like if I was to, uh, to come in here and I forgot to actually set the metric, or this, you know, by constraining one of these to, uh, to one, what happens is, is when I run the, the model, it's just going to say the, the model's under identified, you know, uh, you're going to need to uh, impose a constraint. So just make sure that uh, when you include these two uh, items up here for the mimic model that you're constraining one of them by taking the regression weight and constraining it to one. And so um, what you need to make sure always to kind of remember when you're doing high order models is, is these have to be passed from the first order to the second order have to be formative. You have to assess identification items with a higher order construct which is the best done by using a mimic model. Um, and then for the most part, um, your structural path is really from your higher order construct to your positive word of mouth. Now you'll notice uh, as well that um, the structural path uh, from unique experience to positive word of mouth was from the higher order construct. And so you would think naturally, well, okay, what if unique experience wasn't kind of the IV in this, uh, this situation, but it was the DV, right? So maybe there was something else that was actually influencing that. Would the structural path go to the higher order concept, uh, construct then? Uh, the answer is actually no, uh, it would not. So in this instance, what happens is, let's say we had a, a construct that was called adaptive behavior. So did the employee adapt their behavior to me? And we think that's going to you know, Im impact kind of our unique experience. Well, naturally you would think, well, I'm just gonna put the path from adaptive behavior to unique experience, the higher order construct, but that is not how you test structural relationships when the higher order construct is the dependent variable. You actually have to include paths to the first order constructs. So in this instance, Adaptive behavior would have a path going to surprise and it would have a path going to empathy Because what happens is is you're basically saying with that higher order construct that these You know first order things kind of make up this concept um, And you can't really have a, a path going directly to the higher order concept because really that path should be going to the first order concepts because they get influenced and subsequently it's reflected in the overall concept. So one of the things you just have to kind of know going into um, testing structural relationships with higher order constructs is that that structural path will not go directly to the higher order concept when it is acting as the DV. It will go to the first order uh, concepts. One of the questions I get um, quite a bit is, can I uh, create kind of a summated scale with my high, higher order construct? And the answer's um, a little complicated in some standpoint. Um, you can summate the first order constructs, uh, but you can't summate uh, like all the first order constructs into one kind of overarching construct. Because you just can't, you can't combine different constructs into one. So if I wanted to look at surprise, and I wanted to run it as a, maybe even a path model, like I could combine uh, or summate all of the surprise items up into one item, and I could summate all of the empathy items up into one, but I can't take surprise and empathy and just kind of cram it all together into one, um, one kind of measure for it, because that's really inappropriate. Uh, so from a summation standpoint, what you're really trying to do is to, to still show the unique parts that make it up 
And you're, you'll never do that if you're summating them all together into one. Um, so you're still uh, treating it as a higher order, but you're summating the first order ones, but you're still, again, uh, modeling that higher order, even if it's in a path. And so that's kind of some of the things that you need to kind of think about that you can't really kind of cram all of it into one. Uh, it still has to be kind of in a higher order format. The, um, the other thing too that I want to just kind of uh, wrap up with this is uh, I get the question sometimes of, um, you know, how do, I, um, how do I address the confirmatory factor analysis with a higher order construct? And the way that you really do that is you assess it on the first order uh, constructs. So you really don't even look at the relationships from the first order to the second order in a CFA. Uh, Amos really treats those relationships like structural relationships even though conceptually it's measurement. So in a confirmatory factor analysis um, you would look at specifically the first the items for the first over order like surprise and first order for like empathy and even if you had uh, other constructs out there like positive word of mouth you would look at those particular individual uh, items but you would not necessarily look at the relationship from the first order to the second order that would really take place in the structural model side um, but that's it that's all I wanted to kind of address on this so if you saw value uh, in this uh, video I'd ask that you like and subscribe and if you're looking for more information on how to assess higher order models uh, and just kind of understanding uh, how to analyze sim in general, I encourage you to check out my book, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. Uh, link is in the description. Uh, that's all I got this week. I hope you all have a great week. Good people.